Hey now, what's up guys? I have been thinking recently about doing something different with my wrestling videos and I thought, hmm, why don't I start reviewing like old wrestling shows? Whether it's WWF, WCW, ECW, I don't know, I'm just trying new things, different things and I'd love to know what you guys think of me trying these things out then I'll know whether or not I should continue it. I figured the first attempt at doing this, I'll start with from the Coliseum videos. I don't know if you guys remember when WWF used to release these, but this is called The Free For All. The Free For All is actually a show that they still do today. It's a half hour pre-show before the pay-per-view every month from 7.30 to 8 o'clock, they preview the pay-per-view. But now it's just like, oh yeah, let's show Scott Stanford at the studios talking about the matches and showing video clips of, you know, the last couple weeks or the promos. And it's sort of boring. Recently they've started to add like exclusive interviews and that's been okay, but still it's like, compared to how it used to be, they used to not only have interviews or talk about the matches, but from the actual arena. So it's just a little bit more interesting. But they would have a pre-match. And a pre-match, I mean, they would have one match before every pay-per-view to almost get you ready for the pay-per-view. Or if you haven't ordered the pay-per-view yet, it would be like, hey, look at, look at this great match. This should make you want to order the pay-per-view to see even better matches. They also started doing uh, this thing on WWE.com, which is, I guess, similar to the free-for-all but it pisses me off where now it's like they have the free-for-all on the TV like the half hour before the pay-per-view and now that they've added exclusive interviews it's like I have to watch out for those interviews on there while watch the half hour pre-show online like why can't you just condense it into one thing together and make it similar to how the old free-for-alls used to be Anyways, I'm realizing that I'm almost ranting on it and I'm supposed to be reviewing this actual VHS. Yes, VHS. Can you believe that? Anyways, it's just a compilation of the old free-for-all matches. Majority is from 1996. It's hosted by Michael P.S. Hayes. If you guys don't know who that is, he was a wrestler from the 80s. And he came to WBF mostly as a manager or announcer. They call him the Doc. I don't know. He, he's a little bit annoying as far as hosting this goes. But he's not in it, like, too much. He just comes in between every match and brings you to the next one. First match they show is the pre-show of WrestleMania 12 from 1996. It's the Tag Team Title Tournament Finals. So, I don't know if the Tag Titles were vacated or what, but this is the Finals. It's the Body Donnas versus the Godwins. Now, the Body Donnas, if you don't know who they were, Chris Candido and Tom Pritchard. And they were supposed to be brothers, Skip and Zip. You know, short blonde hair. and Their manager was Sonny. Sonny ended up being the real life girlfriend of Chris Candido. Rest in peace, Chris Candido, by the way. He's no longer with us, unfortunately. The Godwins, we don't know who they are. Henry Godwin and Phineas Godwin. Phineas Godwin ended up being Midian. Midian joined the, the Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness, yada yada, yada yada. Now, this was a cool match, but what I loved about it the most was at the end, Sonny went on the apron, distracted Phineas by like turning, turning around, bending over. I don't know if she lifted up her skirt or what, but distracted him successfully because then he got pinned by the Body Donnas and the Body Donnas won the tag team titles. Next match though, the Body Donnas don't have the tag team titles anymore. I guess between those months, they lost it. And this is now at the pre-show of the King of the Ring. And the Body Donnas, they also lost Sonny because I guess when they lost the belts, Sunny left. She was like, all right, fuck you guys. You don't have the belts anymore. So the Body Donnas versus the New Rockers. The New Rockers consist of Mario Gennetti, who's part of the original one, but instead of Shawn Michaels, it's Leaf Cassidy. If you don't know who Leaf Cassidy is, that was this person's name before he eventually became Al Snow. <laughs> yeah, like, how random. 
And since Sonny is no longer with the Bayadonnas, they have this new manager named Cloudy. And Cloudy is this guy dressed up like a woman, dressed up looking like Sonny. He has a blonde wig, he's wearing like a skirt, and, and, I'm, and I'm sort of sitting there like, not only do I not remember them having this guy as a manager, but I'm like, why, why are they having him pretend to be Sonny? Why? And the match ends with him coming in the ring, makes out with Leaf Cassidy, and then the body does win. I'm like, what? Really? Really? A guy dressed up like a woman? That's their man. Uh, next match is the pre-show to the In Your House pay-per-view, which I miss the In Your House pay-per-views. I wish they brought them back. It's such a great concept, the In Your House pay-per-view. It's, you know, instead of the three-hour format of a pay-per-view, which would cost, back then, it would cost 30 bucks. Now, how much does a pay-per-view cost? 40, 45 bucks now? Fuck. But back then, a three-hour pay-per-view would cost 30 bucks. But they, you know, WWF wanted to bring you something for cheaper in the other months. The top pay-per-views would still be 30 bucks. You know, you had the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, King of the Ring, SummerSlam, Survivor Series. But every other pay-per-view in the other months were called In Your House. They were a two-hour pay-per-view for $20. How fucking awesome was that? Like, they need to bring that back. They do, especially nowadays when you look at the, the other pay-per-views besides the big pay-per-views. And most of them have either filler matches or they need to fill up time so they have people come out to talk. And it's like, you could have just had this be a two-hour pay-per-view for a cheaper price in your house. Anyways, again, ranting. <laughs> Savio Vega versus Justin Hawk Bradshaw. Yes, Justin Hawk Bradshaw is Bradshaw. John Bradshaw Layfield. This is before he was even with Farouk or any of that. He was a cowboy. Bradshaw actually gets the win on Sabio and he used to do this thing where he would brand people. He, I mean, it's not real, he didn't really burn them, but he had this, you know, brand thing and he placed it on their arm. It was really just ink, but I like the idea of it, you know. Next match is Stone Cold Steve Austin, right after winning the King of the Ring in 1996 versus Yokozuna at the pre-show of SummerSlam. This is probably the biggest match on this VHS. Stone Cold, you know, he is just becoming that rebel, that, that SOB type character. He's just coming into that. He left Ted DiBiase, no longer the million dollar man or the million dollar champion. Yokozuna is at his heaviest at this point. He is like 600 pounds. He is huge. In fact, the match ends with Yokozuna about to go on the ropes to do that sit out that he does. But when he goes on the ropes, he loses balance. The ropes break and he falls back and Austin just pins him. It's like, yeah, that's how you know, Yokozuna, that it's time to lose weight. Unfortunately, Yokozuna passed away as well because of his weight and that sucks. Next match, Savio Vega versus Mario Gennetti at the pre-show of In Your House Mind Games. That was the the show where Mankind fought Shawn Michaels for the title. Great pay-per-view, maybe I'll review that one day, huh? Savio Vega, Marginetti, Marginetti had Leaf Cassie out there. I It's sort of random for them to try to do the new rockers, Marginetti and Al Snow. Like, who thought that was a good idea? And it's like, Sh Shawn Michaels went off to this big career, became the WWF champion. He's the champion at the time. And then Mario Gennetti, it's like you go to him and he's still doing the Rockers thing, but just with a different partner. It's kind of sad. But Savio Vega gets the win. Bradshaw comes out, attacks Savio, continuing their feud. Bradshaw, I think he said, was pissed that he hasn't been on pay-per-views lately. Next match is an eight-man Survivor Series traditional tag team match. Yeah, they had a Survivor Series traditional elimination tag team match on the on the free for all, the pre-show. It's Jesse James, Road Dog, Just Incredible, who had a different gimmick. You know, he he he, he had this yellow mask and I don't know, a little stupid. Bob Holly, before he was Harco Holly, and Bart Gunn, uh, Billy Gunn's brother, versus Bradshaw. The Sultan, the Sultan is this guy who pretty much has the same gimmick as Jinder Mahal has now, but he was, he's being managed by the Iron Sheik. And this is Rikishi before he was Rikishi. <laughs> it's funny to go back and watch all these videos and say, hey, that's so-and-so. 
And then they're teaming up with Salvatore Sincere, just some random French guy, and Billy Gunn. So Billy Gunn and Bart Gunn are on opposite teams. They're brothers who used to be a tag team, the Smoking Guns, but now they've broken up and they're going against each other. Probably the best match or the coolest match of this VHS just because you have so many guys in there. It's elimination, so it goes on for a good while. Billy Gunn eliminates Jesse James, which is funny because they eventually become the New Age Outlaws. Yeah. And it's 101 between Billy and Bart Gunn. The crowd was really into it. I was surprised that for a free for all match, they were into seeing Billy and Bart go at it. Bart gets the win, beats his brother. It's just too bad that you never really saw Bart Gunn too much more after that. Ah, uh, no, he did come back in like 98 with Hardcore Holly and they formed the new Midnight Express. So, yeah, I can't figure that. Next match, Rocky Maivia. Yes, The Rock as a rookie. Versus Salvatore Sincere in a one-on-one -on -one match at the In Your House pay-per-view from December. It's time. Uh, that's the one where I think Bret Hart fought Sid Vicious for the title. And, you know, it's always cool to see, like, especially big-time wrestlers, like, say, The Rock, as a rookie, seeing how he was, you know. It's also funny to see that his finisher move back then was just a shoulder breaker. He'd pick them up and then drop them on his shoulder. He didn't, he won by disqualification because uh, Jim Cornette, who was Salvatore Sincere's manager for some reason, <laughs> interfered. During the match, he had an interview with Mankind, which I like. Sometimes I do that once in a while, but not as much as I'd like. Where, you know, Mankind's being interviewed backstage, talking about his match that uh, with The Undertaker or something. And he's there with Paul Bear and the Executioner. <laughs> the Executioner. How stupid was that? And then the last match of this VHS is actually probably the worst. Like, why would you end it here? Maybe it's just because they're like, oh, well, you know what? They've already watched all these matches, so we can just throw this stupid match in at the end. It's from the Royal Rumble 1997 pre-show. It's a six-midget tag team match. Yes, six-midget, like... There's something that they started in 96, continued to 97, where they had these midget wrestlers from Mexico. Most of them were like mask, luchador type wrestlers, but they were midgets. I don't know if midgets is a derogatory term. I've heard them say it's like saying the N-word. First of all, no, midgets, it's not like the N-word because midgets were enslaved and beaten and killed for years and years. So that's just, so I don't care. I'm going to call you midgets. Even if you don't fucking like it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Call us dwarves. Dwarf sounds more demeaning than midgets does. But whatever. So, they're midgets, and uh, the whole thing that they were doing with, not only did they have these luchador midgets, but they had these midgets who were pretending to be wrestlers at the time. Like, they would dress up like mini Mankind, mini Vader. It's just like, maybe the first few times it was funny, Hell, probably back in the day since I was a kid, I probably thought it was hilarious and loved it. But now it's just like, eh, eh. They even brought that back. They brought back midget wrestlers in like 2006 on SmackDown. Remember they had like a midget division that they brought in for like a few weeks or months? Stupid. Anyways, guys, that is the Coliseum video, WWF Free For All. And that was me reviewing it, giving my thoughts about it. Now, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this and if you'd like to see me review more old school shows or pay-per-views or I don't know if I should review like old Nitro or old Raw stuff since I do have them recorded so I could physically go back and rewatch them and talk about them. That's only if you care to hear it. Uh, and two, maybe I'll do it like this. Maybe I'll take requests. If there's people who like want, hey, I want to hear you talk about this pay-per-view. I don't know. I'll do that. Whatever. Whatever you guys want. So, as always, thanks for watching. Peace, subscribe, and later!